Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we are going to do a playthrough of Tales from the Loop, the board game. Now this is, I, I don't know if it's a movie or a TV series uh, from the 1980s, but it is based off of something from that era and it is uh, quite fun. It's a very unique cooperative game. Your kids, you're trying to go on adventures, but you also have to deal with going to school, completing your chores. I love it. It's really fun how you have to combine those two things and you've got these cool looking machines walking around that aren't really going to hurt you but potentially make it harder for you to complete objectives i love it i'm really excited to show this to you and you can see if this is something that you'd like to pick up so what we're going to do is we're going to set up a scenario now i'm not going to do the intro scenario for the game because the intro is two weeks long and that might make this video kind of long so i chose actually a different scenario uh this one is probably one of the more replayable ones it's called the film crew and it's only one week long so that way it's a little bit tighter it's a little bit quicker but i can still show you all the rules of the game so let's go ahead and set up the game and then we'll jump into the playthrough oh but before i I do that because this game is so new i am very likely going to make some mistakes make sure to turn on your klingon subtitles because if anyone lets me know what those are especially after i have uh edited the video i'll put them in the subtitles so people know all right let's jump into setup the first part of setup is of course putting the board on the table and then making sure your trackers for insight and enigma so your insight is right here that's what you want during the game you're gaining insight throughout the game and enigma that's one of the ways that you can lose every scenario it's going to be different uh, for ours if this ever gets to nine we lose the game no matter which scenario you're doing though you'll always put these at zero and then they'll tick up or down as you play the game you also have a calendar on the top left hand side of the board. Make sure to put the X on the Monday spot. Like I said, this scenario, we're only going to go for the first week, but there are some that actually are two weeks long. This also lets you know when you need to have your chores complete. And then on the weekends, you get a little extra time because you don't have to go to school. You're required to play with at least two kids. Now, overall, I'd actually recommend if you're playing this solo to play three kids. But once again, that makes the game a little bit longer. Uh, so I'm just going to play with two, uh, which still works fine. You'll just I, I overall, you're going to see that three players is probably the sweet spot, I would say uh, three or five. What I've done is I've chosen two characters. Our first one here is Sasha, the computer geek. You always start with one iconic uh, item. His iconic item is serial cable, so I have them right here. Uh, you can see here we start with six time tokens. This game, whenever you do actions in the game, it's going to spend time, so you're going to place them onto this spent time spot, and that's what these are denoting, your six time. You're going to grab a favor token, and you're going to put it all the way over here to the left side. Right now, your parents are happy with you. Not going to say that'll last for long. <laughs> uh, you also have one of these tokens tokens that depending upon player count you need to place it and slot it into this area so if you're playing uh, with two to three kids you'll have it on this side where it says if you're doing a test that's using blue cleverness you'll actually get to roll five dice for it but he's kind of dull <laughs> and so because of that if you're ever doing a charisma test he's only going to roll two dice and he can't help anybody with uh, any sort of clever test so we'll slot that into here. I should say, if you were playing with four to five players, you'd actually flip it over and you could slot that in, which is really nice that they did that so that you, know, you have it the right way depending upon your player count. This also are all the actions that you can take on your turn, but we'll talk about that as we play. Lena doesn't want anyone to know, but one of her best friends is Sasha, so they're deciding to play the game together. So Lena's the popular girl. Uh, you can see here she has freestyle as her iconic uh, item, so she'll start with the freestyle. I do want to mention the max amount of items you can have is four. Anomalies, you can have an infinite amount of them. She is very charming, but she's not exactly fast, so she can't help with uh, any sort of test that has to do with speed, but she's quite good at turning on the charm. She has six time as well and she also starts at high favor with her parents we're going to make lena the first player so we'll just place this first player token here now what we can do is choose our chores for the week so uh, each player gets to draw two chore cards and chooses one to keep so let's start with lena since she's here her chores can either be favorite cousin or cramming I've decided to choose cramming for Lena. Yeah, mom says I really need to put effort into this next test. I can spend a time while at the school or at home to place a counter on this card. This can be done twice in a round. 
If I do that, once I do, I would gain the success. If by Friday I haven't, I would gain the failure. So this is what I'm going to do. She's going to be studying. Sasha, on the other hand, he can either be dog walking or dog gone. All about dogs. Well, this one seems pretty cool for him. Simon said he saw a raptor feeding on a deer. I'm not leaving my dog out there. You can, uh, your dog ran off after a hare. Place a counter on this card every time you spend a time in a location adjacent to your home and succeed either at a charisma test, which he's terrible at, but he is really good at being clever, so he can do a clever test as well. If he does that two times, that's what that two is there, he'd gain the success. If he doesn't do that by Friday, he has the failure effect. We'll then grab these two chores we didn't pick and we will shuffle them back into this deck. Our next step is to choose the scenario and we've chosen the mystery islands. The islands are full of strange rumors. With a new VHS camera that one of you got for Christmas, you'll set out to make a documentary for the next Monday session of the videos club. If the kids haven't won by the end of week one, it is an automatic loss. So you can see that's how you know the length of the scenario. Up on top, it'll tell you the rumor sets that you need, and then it will tell you down here which rumor cards you need to use, because some of them, it might say randomly choose a certain set of cards within a set, but you can see here we're going to use all of the cards from both sets of rumor cards. Rumor cards have a location on the front, and then on the back of it, you can see this symbol tells you which set it relates to. So I've grabbed all the cards that are rumor cards for this set, as well as for the set that looks like this, I am shuffling them up and I've placed them out on the board. It tells us also what starting diary we need to start with. We have M1, which we'll read in a second. That's right here. And then we can see here the starting machines. I've randomly picked machines and placed them at C6 and E4. You'll see that in a second. And I've randomly chosen two event locations. That's why I felt like this is a good one. There's so much random. When you play it on your own, it'll be completely different. <laughs> school cards, right now there's only one type of school card. You can see that's that same symbol there. It's like a, a VHS tape. So uh, I've always seen that the school cards, it's just all of them. You just shuffle them up and you're good to go. Here we have our diary card. Excited for the film, you're about to make you set out to see what mysteries you might discover. At 9 Enigma, the kids lose the game. So you can see that's specific to the scenario. Other scenarios, that won't be the case. The kids make a film and win the game if your total insight reaches 8, since we're playing with two kids. You can see it scales depending upon the amount of kids. Failing any rumor card raises your enigma by 1, while success raises your insight by 1. Failing a chore raises your enigma by three. So we really got to make sure we complete our chores. We got to find that dog <laughs> and we got to cram and pass that blasted test. While um, successes raise your insight by one. If a rumor card is pushed off the board, raise your enigma by three. Starting Monday, after the school phase in every, and I'm going to say, I'm going to do normal, uh, every other round, flip this card. You'll always start the game at school. This is where school is, the Sten Harma. So I'll place both of our standees here. Now, normally they would be standing up, and that's somewhat important because if you are able to get home at the end of your day, you're supposed to lay them down. We'll just talk about it because I want you to be able to see them, and it's easier to record for me if they're lying flat like this. I chose two random event locations. This is the first one, and what's really cool is these overlay perfectly. Look at that. You know, you can even see they did the great, a great job of making the artwork. So you just find where it should go on the board, and now it's another action that we can take in those specific locations. So in location J, which is the Sangha Sabi, it's actually a video store. Once per round, any one kid can spend one time here to look at the location letter of the top three cards of the rumor deck, put them back in any order, or place all the cards on the bottom of the draw pile. Up here in location H, Bjorkvik, we have the old astronomer. Once per round, any one kid can spend one time here to roll a charisma check, so that will definitely not be Sasha, <laughs> to get an extra time the next day. Cool. Failure means becoming upset. So you can gain different statuses in the game. You have exhausted, upset, scared, and injured. Each one is worse than the next. You'll see how all that works in the playthrough. Uh, but yeah, if you fail this test, you become upset. Our next step is to set up our starting machines, and I randomly chose these. Once you've determined what machines you're going to use, you want to make sure you're using the correct side. We are playing with two kids, so I have it on the two to three side. The four to five side is slightly harder, so don't do that. <laughs> uh, so you'll grab this, you'll then grab their miniature, 
instance, I did get the deluxe set because you guys know me. I love to pimp out games. Mine is uh, pre-painted and I love how it looks. We have the Par Hoofer MK79. Now down here, this is where if we tried to hack this uh, machine so that we could actually take control of it, we'd have some firewalls we'd have to go through that hopefully I'll show you during the playthrough. Uh, if we do can control it, it can actually move two spaces carrying two kids, which is cool. Uh, you also want to grab their directive card. Uh, we're going to use their general one to start with, at least. Uh, on top, it tells us if we need to avoid this uh, machine or not not you can see the green check mark here means we don't need to avoid it if we are nearby this machine it's not going to try and do anything to us we don't have to worry about it down here is only for when we're trying to hack this specific machine if that symbol shows up then this is what we have to try and do as a test we would have to try and test our toughness our watchdogs here are a little bit harder to deal with than the par hoofer uh, you can see we have three firewalls we have to hack. It has an effect here, alarmed. Become alert when ending a machine move adjacent to another machine. And so when it becomes alert, what you do with this card is you actually flip it over. And then these effects are a little bit harder. Uh, and you'll see why we need to be, go into alert versus not alert uh, as we play the game. Uh, but just so you know, we do potentially want to avoid the watchdogs. So if ever we move and become adjacent or nearby the watchdogs, we have have to either use our cleverness or our toughness to outsmart or break them and then of course if we fail we have this and then if that symbol shows up when we're trying to hack it this is what has to happen here we have the mini for the watchdogs i think they look so cool i love them from our scenario sheet, we know the first machine needs to be placed in location C6. So you can see there's a grid here. We have the machines move by grid. We move by location. I actually kind of like how he does, he does this. So that way, if let's say a machine is in this location, it is nearby this space. Whenever we go here, we have to try and go around this machine. But it's not technically in that spot. I kind of, I find it very interesting how he did that. So we'll put this first one, the par hoofer, at C6. So we have C and 6. And then what we need to do is we need to look around at the locations that are nearby it. So it has location G, H, and C. Uh, actually, C is not. It's not on the edges. It's only orthogonally adjacent to it. We look to see what locations are adjacent to it. If any of them are restricted, which means that they're orange, immediately that machine becomes alerted and we flip this over to the harder side. But if it's open locations, which is what these are called, we leave them on the non-alerted side, which in this game is called the routine side of the card. And that's generally means it's easier to avoid them. The negative effects aren't as bad. So we'll put the watchdogs then in E4. So we have E, one, two, three, four. So we're going to put the watchdogs ooh, right there because we're putting them in E4. You can see they are orthogonally adjacent to the checkpoint. That means since that's a restricted location, we need to flip this over and they are immediately on alert. Slightly harder to hack and potentially could be harder to avoid. I will say for the watchdogs, they actually aren't harder to avoid, but the negative effect, you can see the failure here versus the failure here are definitely different. Now the fun part, we get to seed the rumors out on the board. We're going to start with four different rumors, and these tokens are going to denote the locations that those rumors are at. So this first one is in location L, second one is in G, third one is in H, and fourth one is in M. If I had drawn the same numbered location, uh, not numbered, but lettered location during this intro, I just simply set one of them aside, keep drawing and pick a new one. If ever that happens during the game, all of the machines become alerted. You would discard the one that's out here and replace it with the new one that you just drew. Now in this scenario, any of these rumors that we complete is going to push up our insight. But for other scenarios, that won't always be the case. It might be only specific ones. However, no matter what, if you fail any of one of these, it's always going to push up your enigma. And generally, each round, you're going to have more of these come out. And if you don't resolve these, it's going to push them off. That is when the negative effect here, if a rumor card is pushed off the board, raise your enigma by three. And we lose if we get to nine. So we don't want to let that happen. We've placed our rumors out on the board. We actually have one at the school right now, which is great. We have one at L, one at G, and one at M. This L one is going to be fun because we'd have to avoid these watchdogs, but this G shouldn't be terrible. 
We'll then shuffle up the Anomalies deck and the Items deck, and I think we are ready to start our playthrough. Two more things I want to mention before we start our playthrough. You do have all of these Firewall tokens. Uh, I They say you can put them in a pile upside down, but I just put them in a cup, so we'll randomly draw them if we need them. And I have eight dice that we can use in the game. Th these dice are how you're going to resolve all your tests, and the only way you get successes are with sixes in this game. So, yes, be ready for some dice chucking. Before we jump into the game, I do want to show you the different traits and tags in the game. So if ever you see a heart, that's a brave test. If you see that uh, icon there, what is that? A light bulb, it's clever. Handshake is charming. Lightning bolt is quick. And the fist is tough. And then the opposites of those are here. Let's now start the game with the school phase. So we have preparation. We have to place all kids at the school during a weekday or at the home locations on a weekend. We have to check the diary cards for any school phase triggers. We don't have any yet. We have something at the end of the school phase. Then we have to replenish our time while we're, we're all set to go with our sixth time and then slide any rumor cards. We can ignore that for now. For our school day, we're going to simply draw a school card. We know our active first player is Lena. If something is specifically for one character, it'll be for Lena. But sometimes each person has to do a test or we can help each other. It just depends upon the card. Then we can ignore this right now. We're going to draw rumor cards. We've already done that. And then we'll resolve the school card event and then resolve a success or failure on that test. Let's go ahead and flip over our school card. And we have work visit day. A true wonder of Swedish engineering. Feast your eyes, kids. <laughs> so over here, this normally would tell us to draw new rumors equal to the number of players. That's what that symbol means. But in the first round, we can ignore that. Just so you know, depending upon player count, because you can play with five people, the max amount of rumors that you can draw is four and the minimum amount is one. So if it said uh, players minus two and you're playing a two player uh, game, you'd still draw one new rumor. So you're always going to draw one and you'll have a maximum of four. Now this symbol over here. That means the first player has to resolve this test, but other characters can help. How other characters or kids help, the max amount of kids that can help is two additional kids. For us, that's never going to matter. We're only playing with two, but let's say we're playing with five. We couldn't have one person taking the test and four other kids help. <laughs> uh, but how you help is you simply say, hey, I'm helping and I'm in the same space as you, so I can help you. That means I get to add one additional die to my roll. But if I fail, the failure happens to everyone that is there um, helping as well as the active player unless there's a uh, parentheses if there's a parentheses then the parentheses effect would happen to the helpers and the main effect would happen to the active player so here we have perhaps you can convince the teacher that it's okay for you to stay behind after the visit wraps up so we will now have to do one of these uh charming or yeah a charming test which is actually ridiculous that leno that's her strength <laughs> so normally on a test you always roll three dice if it's a weakness for you you're going to in a two-player game and you can see this here or two to three player game you'll actually only roll two dice so if he was doing this since he's dull he'd only get to roll two dice for that test but if it was a clever test he'd roll five dice uh the other thing is is since this is his weakness he actually can't help with charming tests so with this charming test we cannot have him help. Uh, granted, we probably don't want his help. <laughs> We're rolling five dice with Lena. You can see that right here. It says charming five. Now, if you are playing with l more players, it actually would only be a charming four. So you only roll four dice. The other thing to mention is if you have any items of that same color, you can use those items. Every item that's a different item name, you can use to increase the dice that you're going to roll. So right now she's rolling five, but if she had a pink item, she could roll six dice to a maximum of eight dice for this test. Lena will roll five dice. She's looking for a six on any one of these dice. And we have one, actually we have two sixes, so we're good, we passed. Let's say we had failed. So let's say we had a two and a three. What we could do once per test, so long as you have enough time, is you can push to re-roll all of your dice one time. In order for you to push, what you need to do is be able to spend one of your available time and place it over here in one of the statuses. You always choose the next status in line. So let's say we had one here in upset. Well, if I uh, wanted to push this test, I'd have to place the next one on scared because each one escalates in more difficulty. 
if we had pushed the test that we just did, we would just place one of our time markers here on exhausted. And all that does is it just means we have one less time for this round. And until we rest, we won't get this time back. Because we succeeded at this test, the kids may start the adventure, adventure phase at the Banna Towers. Hmm, let's see if we want to do that. That's actually the Bona Towers. I wish I could uh, read. Sorry about that. Uh, the Bona Tower is a restricted location. So normally starting here costs or moving into here costs two times. So starting here is a huge boon if we wanted to go into this area during this turn. However, all of our rumors are over here on the right side. So I actually think I'm going to forego that. We've now completed the school phase. Normally we'd move to the machine movement phase, but because of the specific uh, scenario we're doing, we have something else we need to do first. Starting Monday after the school phase in every other round, flip this card. Come on, why can't we just go to do our film? Randomly draw one of the remaining M2 cards. These are complications that will change something for the kids as they adventure onto the Malur Islands. After putting the complication into play, we'll flip this card back over. There are a ton of M2 cards. That's why I felt like this was a good scenario to show you. Uh, so we'll just shuffle them up and let's pick uh, this one. As you were about to set out for today's film adventure, something happens. Randomly select one kid who immediately loses one time, then flip this card. Sasha is one, two, and three, so it will be Elena. She will lose one time and now let's see what's happened. Oh no, we have a disgruntled crew. I don't care if you're hungry or thirsty. We have to get this right or we're finished. Stop complaining. Pushing any roll now costs two time, of which one has to be placed on a condition. The other one is placed on an action space. At the end of this turn, discard this card. Now, turn is not a good word to use. Uh, they will probably change that in future uh, printings of this game. There aren't any turns in this game. You're going to play together. You can use your time at any time, which is really fun. So I can use a couple time to move somewhere, and then you can come and join me, and then we do actions. So that should be round, not turn. Turn. There is no individual turn. That will now complete the school phase. Now we move to machine actions. So what we're going to do is first look to see if we have a firmware reset. We don't. Uh, there's a symbol that would show on this left hand side right here. You'd have to have the current school card and the prior school card have that symbol. If that would happen, then all machines are reset. If we'd hacked a machine, it would reset and go back to its original location. Then what we need to do is movement. We need to check the school card to determine how each machine moves. And then we'll have to replenish or reset their alert state. Set machines to routine or alert depending on nearby locations. Do not change the alert state on machines with a hack token. We haven't hacked anything, so we don't have to worry about that. The two machines that we have are this one and this one, and this shows the locations are going to move. So we're going to move one sector to the left and one sector down. This one's going to move one sector to the right and one sector down. Machines will never end their movement in the same location as another machine. If they would, they'll simply end in a, an adjacent location. Uh, but they will jump over each other if, if they have movements that go over those spaces. So we have the Parhoofer. It's going to move one this way and then one down. Now it has a nearby location that's restricted. So that means it's going to move from being routine to alert. So I've done that. Then we have the watchdogs. The watchdogs are going to move one space to the right and one space down. So they're gonna be right here. They are now no longer adjacent to a location that is restricted. So that means they'll go from being alert over to being uh, routine. Well then simply discard this card. Next, we'll move to the meat and potatoes of the game, the adventure phase. After we have each used up as much time as we want, we can see if we can get home on time. If we do, yay for us. If we don't, well, you'll see what happens. Our favor with our parents <laughs> goes down. Uh, then we check the diary and then we go to the end phase. All the actions that you can take in the game are right here on your player board, which is kind of nice. You can walk, which simply means you spend one time and you move one location. If you are walking into a restricted location, that takes two time. Walking out of a restricted location just is one time, unless you're going into another restricted location. You can do a bus ride. So there's locations that have bus stops. You can spend one time and move between any two of the bus stops. You can do a car ride, so you can move to any open location. 
uh, uh, by doing that. You basically ask your mom or dad, hey, give me a ride, would you? Uh, but your mom and dad don't love having to give you a ride. I mean, they've got stuff to do, like recording board games or something like that. <laughs> So what the happens then is your favor with your parents actually goes down. And if ever your favor with your parents is in the middle or in the bad space, you are not able to get rides from them. So essentially you can get a ride from them once per round. You can do a machine ride if you've hacked a machine and you can use that and ride it. Uh, you can spend one time to scout. If you're in a location with one of those rumor tokens, you can flip the rumor token over and flip the card over, not resolve it, just flip it over so you can see what it is. That costs one time. You can then investigate it later, someone else can investigate it, or heck, you can just investigate one that you haven't scouted by spending the time. You can spend a time to trade items, and you can spend time to hack, and we'll see how that works if we hack. Finally, you can once per round, you can spend one, and you can see there's only one spot here to rest. When you rest, you can heal up any of your uh, different conditions here. The only one you can't fully heal is let's say you're injured. When you're injured, you have to set a time over here, and it takes time to uh, get rid of that. If you rest, you can actually push this forward one space, uh, but you won't immediately get rid of it. So resting is certainly helpful. And then finally, if you want to make sure you're home for dinner, because that will increase your favor with your parents, and if you're not home for dinner, that decreases the favor with your parents, uh, you need to be able to spend a time at the end of the end of the round, or two time if you're in a restricted location, to get home for dinner. So I think my first action I'm going to do is simply spend one time here, and I am going to scout in our location. We can do that because we have a rumor here at the school. So we'll flip this over, and that shows that we've scouted it. And then we can flip over that rumor card and we have feeding grounds. Look at all of this blood. Oh, and is that a dog collar? Oh, let's hope that's not, let's hope that's not Sasha's dog. Okay, you can see here, this test is a bravery test. So we can take that test. After losing at rock, paper, scissors, you have to move quietly and with purpose, ignoring the rustling in the bushes over there. If we succeed, we would, uh, it's disgusting, but at least you found something, gain an item. And if you fail, you have this negative effect. And you can see over here, do you see how this is in parentheses? If somebody helps with this, instead of them gaining an injury, they'd simply gain upset. Now, what's really unique and cool about this game is that all of these tests, and I shouldn't say all, a lot of them, have a keyword that if you can create that specific combo, so if we can create a combo that creates a decoy, we can just automatically succeed at this test. But if we do that, we have to combine items that we have or anomalies. And when we do that, if we use items that are not our iconic items, after doing that to auto succeed, we then have to discard those items. So the combos are cool, but it does come at a cost. However, we know how brave Sasha and Lena are. Not that brave. They would only be rolling three dice for this test. Now they can help each other, boost it up to four. But if I do that and I fail and then I try and push, uh, which normally would cost us one time, because of this round, it's actually going to cost us two time to push. I think I'm going to have to do that at some point, but I think the first thing I'm going to do, because we just read about a dog and it just makes thematic sense, we're going to try and do our doggone chore. We can spend one time in a location adjacent to our home. How do we know where our home is? We look on our, on our board and we can see our home is location J. I'm not even going to try and say that location. I'll show you where that is on the board, but we're going to spend that one time and we have to make a test. We are definitely going to make a clever test because we can roll five dice. Sasha's home location is right here, this video store, location J, and he is adjacent to it. You can see this line shows us that we are connected, so we are adjacent to this location. We have five dice. We're looking for one six, and we do have a six. Awesome. So that's our first success. You saw we had a two on there. That means we need two total successes. It doesn't say I can't do this more than once per round and I don't have to choose a new location. So what the heck? We're going to do it now because in this scenario, even completing our chores pushes up our insight. So why not? I'm going to spend our third time already and we're going to try this again. We've got five. We're going to be really clever and we're going to find that dog. So let's give our dice a roll. There's two sixes. We're good to go. We just found our dog. When you complete your chore, you can discard it for its success ability. You find her and she found something as well. Take the Power ACC Anomaly card. 
Here we have our power ACC anomaly. Now you can have an infinite amount of anomalies, only four items. It has two uses, so I put two tokens on it. You can see here it may be used to automatically succeed when hacking a default firewall. Now I just want to show you the two items that our two kids have. So Sasha has the serial cables. If, let's say, Sasha and Lena decided to do a test together, and that test had one of the keywords called, uh, let's see, power, what they could do is, you can see here, this serial cable combined with a battery, which you can see here, would actually give us a combo of power. And so, if these weren't our iconic items, we would discard them, we would gain that combo power and immediately succeed at that specific test. But since both of these are our iconic items, we actually wouldn't even have to discard them, which is really cool. So anything that has a keyword power right now, if we are both in that same location, we can auto succeed, which I love. On the backside of the player aid that's provided in the game, they have all the combos and item tags. So you can see the combos that you can make and the items that make those combos. Normally, completing a chore would not increase your insight, but on this scenario, you can see uh, failing a chore raises your uh, enigma by three, while success raises your insight by one. One down, seven to go. Lena just saw Sasha save his pet dog, and she's going, you know what, I can be brave too. I think we're going to have her try and resolve that um, rumor that's in her location, so that is a bravery test. She doesn't have anything about bravery, so she's just going to roll three dice. However, she has her freestyle. She's going to put on her headphones, and she's going to rock out to some music. And with that music, she's going to go, I got this. I got this. And then Sasha's in that same location, and he's going to go, you know what? I'm going to help you. I just found my dog. So because of that, he is helping. That'll give her one additional die. So she normally would have three. She has an item that uh, gives her additional bravery, so that's four. And then Sasha is going to help, so that's five. But remember, if we fail this, Sasha will also have a negative impact. I'm going to date myself here, but I was born in 88, so I don't really know a lot of 80s music. But uh, just imagine that music going while you roll, and we have no sixes. So that's going to be a failure. I definitely think we're going to push. Normally, to push and re-roll, we'd simply place one here in the exhausted spot, but because of our disgruntled crew, we're going to also have to place one here. Ugh! So that's going to take us two time, but we definitely want to succeed at this test. Lena must have been listening to Whitney Houston. She's now turned on Bon Jovi. Whoa! Living on a prayer. There you go. That is a six. That's a, a success. We have here, it's disgusting, but at least you found something. Gain an item. The item we found is a VIC-20. It's a computer. It can be combined with cables, which you know who has cables, Sasha, that can create an interface. Battery, which actually we have, which also can create an interface. And combustible, it can make parts. Now, whenever you succeed at a test, you get a free trade action uh, that you can do with anybody in your space. But I think I'm going to have Lena hold on to this because this will help her if she has to do some sort of clever test. We'll also discard the rumor, and we will discard this so that we know that we've completed that specific rumor. Lena's next action, she's going to simply rest so she can get this time token off of the exhausted spot, but that will simply put it here. It's as if it was spent. She doesn't get it back to use, uh, but then that way she's not exhausted. So next round, she can potentially push and not push herself to upset. Just so you can see, if you become upset, you can't help other players. You can relieve this by getting help from somebody else. Uh, you can also become scared. If you're scared, you can't use your strength. So if I'm normally charming, I wouldn't gain that. And it's relieved by actually succeeding. And then, of course, injury. You have to place a, a token on here. You get minus two on all rolls, and you can't push. Uh, and then you have to wait three rounds to get it back, but you can rest and push that up faster. So yeah, these are no good. And I do want to mention, as noted on the player aid, all three, exhausted, upset, and scared, can be relieved by resting. Sasha is going to use time number four, and he's going to ask one of his parents for a ride. Hey, Dad, can you give me a ride to the store? <laughs> he's not super happy about it, so Favor's going to go down. He can't get a ride a second time uh, this round, but as long as he gets home on time for dinner, we can push that back up. I almost forgot, because we did complete one of those rumors successfully, we'll push up our insight to two. Remember that parents will only give you rides to open locations. They're not going to drive you to a restricted location. So I think we'll have Sasha be driven all the way over here to the old astron astronomer location, and he's got two time left 
why don't we just do an investigate on this one with his second to last time? It's a little risky, but I love to live on the edge. Let's flip over the location H card and we have photo negatives. It looks like machines or something, but also blood. So we have to be clever here, which is ridiculous because that is what we're good at. Try to develop the negatives you found. They seem to show some machines with strange growths on their limbs. Now, if we could create chemicals, which unfortunately with our items we can't, we could just auto succeed. Instead, we have to do a test. We'll roll five dice. I do have one time left, but that's not going to be enough to push this. So if I fail, which I just did, there is no way I can push that to try and get a success. And of course, failing any rumor card raises your enigma by one. Well, that was a big bummer to fail that one. We'll move this to a one. If we get to a nine, we lose. Not to mention, we're going to become scared. And because we have become scared, we have to place our last time here, which then means we're not going to get home on time oh, for dinner. That's a bummer because that's going to hit our favor and likely we're going to get grounded. Here we have the rules for being home for dinner. If you're at an open location, going home just costs one time. If you're at a restricted location, it costs two. If you're already at home, it costs zero. And if you control a hacked machine, it actually is minus one cost to whichever one of those that you have, which is cool. Now it has been confirmed by the designer that if your home is nearby a machine, you don't have to do the alert test because it's just the act of you ending your turn. So Lena has one extra time, so she'll be able to get home on time. Uh, Sasha does not. Because of that, when we get to the end phase, did the kids get home for dinner? Well, one did, the other didn't. Because Sasha did not get home for dinner, his favor is going to go down by one, and now he's grounded, which means he's going to have to take two of his time here, and he's going to put it in the grounded spot. He will not get that time back until his favor goes to here or here. So that was a real blunder that I did. <laughs> uh, it is what it is. Lena, on the other hand, did get home in time for dinner, so she'd normally move her favor up, but her favor is already up at the highest spot, so we just leave it as is. We then would move any injured conditions one step to the right. We can ignore that. If we had to resolve chores, we would do it now. Then we'll check our diary cards for our end phase condition. The only thing that we have to do is discard this disgruntled crew. That was only for that round. And then we'll move ourselves to Tuesday. That will end our first round. We'll start the second round by drawing our next school event. I'm also going to make sure each of us are at the school location. We have the bus breakdown event, and over here you can see we need to draw two more rumors. Good thing that I at least completed slash failed two rumors. <laughs> a weird looking bird ran across the road and made me swerve into the barn. Oh great. The bus is unavailable this turn. No one can take the bus ride action. Oh, and I should have mentioned that first player would have moved over to, S to Sasha. So if there had been a roll here, he would have had to take it, but there isn't one. We're now going to do the movement. We have a single move to the right for the par hoofer and a movement down for the watchdogs. First things first, let's slide over our rumors. So we have these two. We're going to have two new rumors in location C and F. Now you don't, you won't always have four here. There might be times where let's say we completed three of them and I only drew two for the players. You might have one empty. It just so happened that I had uh, completed two. We now have two rumors in restricted locations and two here in non-restricted locations. The par hoofer will move one space to the right. It's going to stay, actually it was in alert. It is now in non-alert mode, which is nice, the routine mode. And then the watchdogs, they can't move any farther down. So they're just going to stay where they are, staying in the non, or I should say routine uh, phase. We'll now gain our time back for the next round. Sasha has all of three time because, of course, he's grounded for half the day. Lena is doing pretty good, though. She has all six. So we can do a lot with Lena. Sasha might try and help. He might rest and then make sure he's at home. <laughs> Being that Sasha is totally grounded, the first thing he's going to do is rest for his first action, and that will allow him to no longer be scared. He's at home. He's going to relax. <laughs> okay, he's not actually at home. He's at the school right now because that's what happens at the end of the school day, but he's resting to get rid of that scared. Of course, the bus broke down this round, really, <laughs> because what he could have done was taken the bus to this location, sat there and waited till the end of the round and at least helped out with whatever this is. But he can't do that. He only has two time left and he absolutely needs to be home for dinner to get his favor up with his parents. 
So I think as much as there's nothing for him to really do with one time that he can do, we're just going to move over to Lena. Lena is going to spend two time cramming for her tests. She wants to do well. She wants to show her parents she knows how to study. So she can spend up to two time around trying to study while she's at the school. So that's two out of the four. Then what she's going to do is ask her parents for a ride. So that's going to take a time. Uh, and you know, normally she'd take the bus. Once again, the bus is broken down. So her parents aren't happy that they have to drive her, but she's going to get a drive from them. She's going to get a drive to location G right here. Now, normally what we'd have to do is after ending our movement here, we'd see that we have a nearby machine. Is that machine one that we have to worry about avoiding? Nope. It's a check mark. We're good to go. That parhoofer is just sitting there doing its own thing. We have three time left. I love living on the edge. I need to do some of these rumors. Otherwise, it's going to throw out my enigma terribly. So I'm going to spend one time to simply not scout, investigate whatever's here. We're going to have to hope this isn't terrible. <laughs> we have the spiders. Well, that, that sounds wonderful. I heard that the speed inhibitor can be overcome with a simple fix. So this is a clever test, which we're neither good nor bad with. Uh, so we'd be rolling three dice. They've stood here since Gibrian Frisky couldn't get them to work. Maybe some crafty kid can hotwire one. So first of all, can we make the keyword or combo cables? Our two items we have is a computer and a battery. Uh, yeah, nothing here is giving us cables. Normally this test would be a three then for Lena, but she does have her computer. She's going to look up some stuff on that. What is that called? The internet, uh, the interwebs, and we'll get plus one die for this. So we're going to roll four dice trying to get one success. What does the internet say? It says that we can't find anything. So we're definitely going to use a time here, put it in our exhausted spot so that we can push and re-roll this. Oh, come on. We can't fail this now. Come on. No, nope, no sixes. That's another fail. Well, if you look here, that success would have been really nice. But no, we have our failure. No wonder Frisky left them to rust. They're junk. Become upset. And not only are we going to be upset, our enigma goes up by one to two. I believe since we have a time token here, we simply move this one down to upset. This is future Colin to talk to you about conditions and how I failed to do this correctly a couple times and then end up doing it right later. So you become hurt by failing rolls or by pushing, rerolling. When a kid is required by the rules or the card text to gain a specific condition, move one time from either your pool and place it in the slot of the mentioned condition. If that slot already contains time, or if the text does not specify a condition type, the kid must spend uh, or must instead place time in the slot of a more severe condition than the most severe one already uh, locked in on their character board. Also, if the kid has already spent their last time from the pool, take one time cube from the action space on the character board instead. So to me, it seems like you can most certainly have one time in the exhausted, one in the upset, one in the scared, and even one in injured. I had, uh, or you're going to see, I move mine down to the lower levels. No, that's not right. I should be placing an additional time. Even if I don't have any time left, I'll take it from the action spot and put it there. All right, let's go back to the game. I'm not sure if we're supposed to take another one and put it there. Let me know what is right, and I'll make sure to put a subtitle here to let you know. But I'm assuming that we just only lose one time in these three spots. We just move it up and down. So unfortunately, we're now upset and can't help. Unfortunately, because of this, the last thing we're going to do is simply move to our location that happens to be our home, the location C. C is certainly adjacent. I wish I could stay there, but it is what it is. And you can see why having more kids is way more helpful, because if I had more kids, we could be helping each other and pumping up our dice rolls. Only having two is certainly making it a little bit harder, but I'm okay with that. We're going to end the round. Sasha has two time left. He only needed one time to be able to get to his home location. And fortunately for Lena, she's already at home, so that cost her zero time. This means we can push her favor up by one. And Sasha will no longer be grounded. Yay. So we'll put these here. Next time he'll get all of those back, which is nice. We'll now move the first player token back over to Lena. We'll move ourselves to Wednesday on the calendar track. And we'll move back to that school phase. We'll flip our school card over. The first thing we see is that we need to place out two more rumors. 
Well, here's the deal. We're going to slide these over. We're going to place one here, and then we can't place this second one. So this one gets pushed off of the rumor track. Now, if you play on hard mode, you're instantly done. <laughs> uh, for us, with this specific scenario, I would say in general, you'll increase your Enigma by two. But for our scenario, we increase our Enigma by three. That'll move us from two to five. And remember, we lose at nine. We now resolve our card and we have machine transport. Yep, these are reactor workers. You've got a good eye for bot models, kid. So this is a clever test for Lena. You can see here that we can certainly help and Sasha will definitely want to help her. Uh, we can impress the driver with your knowledge to get a closer look at the machines. So right now, her total cleverness is basic three. She is currently upset, but that kid cannot help others, but she can be helped. Uh, and it says here can be relie relieved by rest or getting help from another kid on a future roll. So if Sasha helps, we can actually relieve that upset status, which is really, really nice. That means Lena can roll three dice plus one because she has her computer. So she's learned a little bit about these machines plus one because she's got Sasha supporting her, telling her all about them. So that's five dice. Come on, five dice. We need a six. There's one finally. Not only will Lena no longer be upset because she was able to impress the driver, she can automatically succeed with a hacking of one firewall this round. Now this scenario so far, I haven't seen a reason to hack one of the machines. If we don't do it during the playthrough, I will do it at the end, uh, just so that way I can show you how that works. Lena will then take her time token here from the upset and we'll put it here in her action space. It's used for this round, but she's no longer upset so she can certainly help. That's the end of school day on Wednesday. Now we need to randomly draw one of these M2s. Let's do this one. It looks like we have the same flavor text on the top. We have to randomly decide which kid's gonna lose some time, just one, and then we'll flip this card. Sasha is one, two, and three, so it will be Sasha, Sasha he loses one time. Lost a tape. What do you mean you don't know where you put the bag? I had yesterday's tapes in there. <laughs> Each kid has to visit their home location this turn or the group will lose two insight. Oh, at the end of this round, discard this card. At least our homes aren't too far away, so I've got some ideas. Now we're going to have the two enemies move. The watchdogs are just going to stay where they are. They keep trying to move down, but they can't. Uh, the power hoofer is going to move up one and to the left one. That will mean, though, that the Parhoofer will be on alert instead of simply being on routine. So we'll flip that over. The first thing Lena is going to do while she's at that school is spend two more time, and that's going to allow her to finish the cramming. She's crammed all she needed for her test. She has succeeded. Now, I think I did this wrong. I just checked the rules. I believe during that check chore phase, we actually gain the success. So right now we won't gain this benefit. We will do that at the end phase of this turn. But just so I don't forget that we did complete our chore for this scenario that will bump up our insight by one. We're each going to spend one time to move to the video store. Uh, that means that Lena only has two time left, but Sasha still has one, two, three, four time left. This is his home location, so he doesn't have to worry about losing insight. Then, although I know it's risky, I still think we're going to do it. We're just going to spend a time and instead of scouting, we're going to try and complete this rumor. Let's see what we find. And we have, okay, well, it, you know, that's what we're the worst at is, of course, a charisma test. High schoolers. <laughs> They're just going to eat Sasha alive. We shouldn't have taken that detour. Now they're already here. It's cool. We can just talk to them. They're just older kids, not monsters or anything. Okay, can we make the knockout? Remember, we're both in the same location. Let's see if we can do that. Looking at our cards, we absolutely cannot do that. So we have to do this test. <laughs> For uh, Sasha, that's two dice. Uh, we could have Lena help, but then she could potentially become upset. Is it worth it? Well, three dice is always better than two, and we can push this. So yeah, let's have Lena help. So we have two dice because unfortunately Sasha as you can see is pretty dull and high schoolers don't love dull people but Lena's is going to come in and try and uh, make him look cool let's see it Sasha maybe Lena is all that you need <laughs> okay do we want to push it I think we I think we need to we're going to try I'm going to place this time on exhausted to push that roll we're looking for a six 
Come on, Lena, give him the boost that he needs. Yes, that is a six. That'll push our insight up to a four. And the high schoolers think that Sasha's okay. Very likely because of Lena, but we'll take it. So he can gain a makeup or clothes item. You know what neither of us are great at? Being quick. So let's grab the sneakers. And I'm going to leave that with Sasha. He might want to be able to run. <laughs> Sasha only has two time left, so let's use one to ask for our parents to give us a drive. That's going to push us down to here, but we're going to have them drive us to our home location. That'll be location C, which is great because that will mean we have now gone to our home location, so we don't have to worry about both of us. Well, we've already completed both of us going to our home location. We do, though, now have to avoid this machine, and we do that either by outrunning it or outsmarting it. And we're definitely going to do the outsmarting because that's what our basic level is, which is three. And then we have that computer, so that gives us a four die roll. Come on, Lena, you can sneak by that machine. There's a six. We're good. For our final action, since we're already home, let's go ahead and check out this rumor. We're not going to have any re-rolls for this, so it's going to be what it'll be. Okay, it's a bravery test. We'll be able to roll four dice. The dark tunnel. It smells like the air before a thunderstorm down here. What was that sound? We'll do a bravery test. This is not what you had in mind when you set out exploring. Steal yourself to make it through the tunnel system. So we have our three, but then we're going to put on our Bon Jovi tunes to roll four dice. We're just looking for one six. There we have it. We're now at Insight 5, so it's 5 to 5. Ooh, it's a close game. It feels good to have the sun on your face again. Get a free rest action. Eh, we're okay. We don't even need a rest action. But the big thing is, we completed this rumor. Sasha has two time left. He's going to spend one time simply to do the rest to get rid of his exhaustion. And then since he's at home, he can do this for the second uh, action, which is his last one. And he has once per round, any one kid can spend one time here to look at the location letters of the top three cards of the rumor deck, put them back in any order, or place those cards uh, back on the bottom of the draw pile. So one, two, three. Our locations that we have are A and C and X. We'll see is Lena's location, home location, so I like that, but A and X are both hard to get to. Hmm. Maybe we'll just put all three of these on the bottom. I like the C. Let's push. We'll, we'll put the C on top with, with uh, X and then A underneath it. During the end phase, we're both at home for dinner, so that means we both can move up one on our favorite track with our parents. Our parents love us again! And then we get to do the success for cramming. Might as well get use out of the school books you've been lugging around. Search the item deck and discard pile for an item with the knowledge tag and uh, then grab it. If not available, draw an item. We've got one here, the school books. Can be used as any one of the components in any combo. So when we need to make a combo, we can use the books as if it's anything else, which is sweet. We'll now move ourselves to Thursday. We've got Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday left. Let's draw our next school card, and we have a downpour. Once again, two more rumors. My goodness. So our next two rumors are going to be in location C and X. Unfortunately, we have two open slots. I'm telling you, there are ones that have minus ones and even minus twos there. Just don't happen to seem to be drawing them. Why is there twice as much yearly rainfall on these islands? Nature hates us. <laughs> so we have a toughness test, and I forgot to move the first player token back over to, oh, you know, Sasha. Oh yeah, he's super tough. Walking in this downpour is draining. The first time you walk this round, check to see how it goes. <laughs> So the first time you go for a walk, you actually have to do this test. And that would be each player individually has to do this the first time they walk. So unlike the normal events where we do them now, we'll wait till someone does a walk. When they do, they individually have to do this. No one can help them. No one can help them. So both of us are okay at walking, so that means we'll roll three dice. If we succeed, we're all right. But if we fail, we become exhausted. Okay, and then we do have moving of the Parhoofer one up. And the watchdogs will move one to the right. Having the Parhoofer move up here is actually really nice because it's no longer going to be on alert. It'll be back to its routine. And then one to the right, yes, for the watchdogs, they're going to stay on routine, no problem. 
I think this is the first time that we have both had all of our time available to us. Let's use it wisely. We're at a bus stop at school. So we're going to use that bus stop so we can go to another space that has a bus stop. One of our rumors is over here in location C, so let's both of us go here. And then remember, there is a machine, the Par Hoover, that is nearby because it is orthogonally adjacent to the location that we're at, but it is uh, not going to worry about us. It's just doing its thing. It's on routine. So we are then, let's see, should I do Lena or Sasha? I'm going to do Lena because I want to. We're going to have her spend a time and we're going to investigate this. And I know what you're thinking, Colin, why don't you scout these? Well, but time is always of the essence, right? Oh, of course. Why didn't Sasha do this? We've got an ice cream break. There's an ice cream truck broken down right by the Anderson's old barn. When you arrive, smoke is billowing out from the engine. The driver is scratching his head, mumbling about all the melting ice cream. Maybe it's time for a break in today's film schedule. Uh, if we can make parts, it's an auto succeed. But this is a clever test. We have Sasha here. We have our computer item, and Lena is okay with doing those tests, so she could roll three. We'll have Sasha help for four, and then we'll use the computer item for five. I could potentially make parts to auto-succeed, but I think I can do it with five dice. Lena and Sasha walk up to that truck driver, and they don't do a great job. <laughs> uh, so Lena's going to push that for sure. She'll use one time, putting it in the exhausted spot. We'll pick all these up. Come on, we got this. Five dice, we need a six. There are no sixes there. That's going to move this up to a six now. So our Enigma is, uh, what is that, three away from losing? And unfortunately, because there is no parentheses, both of us become upset because the ice cream was wasted. Sasha thought he could do it. He thought he could tell Lena how to take care of it. Uh, didn't work. This means that Sasha will have to place one here in the upset spot. And the more I think about it, the more I feel like it makes more sense that I have to place another time here in the upset spot. Then what I'll have Lena do is simply a rest action to get both of these back. She'll only have one time left. That means it's up to Sasha. Sasha's going to have to use two time to be able to do a move action. He's going to move from here over to the Nordic Gobi. And of course, because he just did a movement and it's raining, you know what he has to do? He has to check to see if he gets even more upset. He rolls three dice for toughness and he does not get a six. So that means he has to spend a time. My goodness, we're just, we're just doing terrible. We'll have to spend a time to put it in the exhausted spot. And as much as I want to actually do the... Yeah, I want to do the mission that's there, but I can't. I'm going to rest to get rid of both of these. Lena is in an open location with one time left, so she will be able to get home for dinner on time. The favor is not affected. Sasha, unfortunately, will not, but he didn't ask for a ride this time, so his favor is just hit by one. We'll then move to the next day, which is Friday. We'll draw our top school event, and we're going to lose the game. Because I can't roll a six to save my life, we need to place out two of these. I can't place that second one. This one gets pushed off. That's going to increase our enigma by three. That means we'll move our enigma from six to nine. That's a bummer. That means we just lost the game. We were close. We got to five. If I could have succeeded at just one or two more of those missions or rumors, eh, oh well. There are a couple things that I didn't really show in this game that I'd like to, so I'm going to show them now if you'd like to see them. If you just wanted to see how the game played, feel free to end here. I'm just going to show a couple things about hacking and how all of that works. Something that I never did during the game but I could have was scout a nearby machine. If I did that, I would draw two random tokens from this uh, the cup that I have, and I'd place them out over here. Now, it's always the two leftmost ones you'd reveal, so if, let's say, we were scouting the watchdog, there'd still be one empty one that we wouldn't know what it is. Uh, but this is going to tell us what tests we need to pass to try and hack this specific machine. If the machine is in the routine state, these are the tests we need to do, which is a green one and a green test. So uh, we, would, we wouldn't be very good at that. If it was in an alerted state, or if ever we failed one of these tests, we then get more chances on the alerted side. We'd actually have to do both of these tests if we pass those. Then we move and do the default firewall test, which is the toughness test. 
If we'd pass that, then we'd actually take control of this machine. That machine would move into the location that the uh, person who hacked this was at. And how this how hacking works is you can actually hack as a team. You have to spend time. Each person has to spend at least one time, and you have to spend time equal to the amount of spaces that you could place firewall tokens. So if we were trying to hack this one, we'd have to spend at minimum two time. So if we had two kids each spending one time, awesome, we're good to go. Then who, whichever kid spent the most time that kid if successful would actually gain this as a kind of think of it as a companion and you could with one time do a movement of two and having it transport up to two kids for an example, let's say our two kids were here and we hacked this par hoofer. The par hoofer would then move into this location. Then what we could do is for one time, uh, and let's say Sasha was the lead hacker and so now Sasha controls that machine. Uh, he could then spend one time to have that par hoofer move two sectors. So you move the uh, par hoofer back into a sector, move it two spaces, one to let's say all the way over here and then any of the orthogonally adjacent locations which this would be only this one could drop the kids off at that spot kind of a cool way to move yourself around makes it a lot easier you can get into restricted locations easier but remember that whenever the uh, bottom two cards in the discard pile, I shouldn't say the bottom, the top two cards in the discard pile of the school deck has those symbols on it, that means there's a factory reset. And then you remove all of the hacked tokens on those machines and you put them back in their starting locations. So usually you only have control of them for about two turns is the max really. Uh, so make sure that if you do hack them, you use them as much as you can. <laughs> And there you have it. That was Tales from the Loop, the board game. I really enjoy this. I love that you do your actions together. You can help each other, uh, but it's not too easy. I do think, though, the best player count is three kids, uh, you, it, three or five, because you really want to be able to move around and help each other. You can tell those tests are hard. You need a six. It's not a five or a six. It's a six. So you really want to be rolling five or six dice to get those successes and that happens a lot more when you've got at least three kids on the table so i do think that the scalability is maybe not as good as other games but playing solo three kids it's not hard um, i just felt like it was overwhelming while recording <laughs> thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this and i'll catch you at the next stop